Hello everyone, I am Wombird, and in this video I want to concentrate on what I think are the best weapons for you to use at level 3 traders. We're going to have a look at what I think is the best ammo for you to use, and I've got some rifle builds to show you, around 7 in total. So lots of choice available across four different calibers. I think you're going to find a weapon you'll enjoy using in this video. Let's kick the video off as we did with the level two traders video looking at the ammo chart. Up on screen now I've got four calibers. So the screen's getting pretty busy. But I'm going to highlight some rounds in particular. And these are the rounds I'm going to recommend you use. The 545 by 39 That's the standard AK ammo. This 556 by 45 The standard NATO ammo. 762 by 39 The higher caliber Russian ammo. And 7.62 by 51 the high caliber NATO ammo. The rounds I want you to focus on, 7N39, that's PPBS, M995, BP, and M61. I've highlighted those rounds in particular because they are at the top level of the calibers that I'm showing up on screen. I doubt you're going to be able to go out into raid with a full loadout just of that ammunition. It's going to be too expensive to run and you're going to have troubles obtaining it as well. So you are going to go into raid with some reserve ammo. For example, with 762 by 39 you're going to go with BP and your reserve ammo is going to be PS. I'll show you that when we get to the weapon builds. What ammunition to take as your main ammunition, what to use as your reserve ammunition. But the idea is that you've at least got some of that main ammunition there. So that when you come up against a PMC, you have the best chance of killing them. The round I'm going to recommend you use for the 545 caliber is the PPBS Ignit round. Penetration chance to level 4 armor is 97% at 100 meters. Penetration chance to level 5 armor is 95% at 100 meters. And level 6 armor, 66% at 100 meters. So this round, one of the most penetrating rounds in the game. This will deal with anybody using any tier of armor. A lot of people don't like the Iglianic round because the damage is quite low. At the full 100 meter range, you probably won't get a headshot. The damage is 34. You're going to have to hit your opponent three times in the chest to kill. But the advantage is it doesn't matter what armor they wear. If you hit them three times in the chest, they are going down. You're going to have to craft this round at the workbench. But it is actually a pretty forgiving craft. 1,170 rubles per shot. Your reserve ammunition is BSGS. You're going to have to pick this up with a barter, a level 3 prapper, two hot rods, and two Marlboros for 30 rounds of BS. So this ammo is limiting, but I do not recommend you use any ammo below BS for the 545 quality. I tell a lie, you can use 7N40, which is the new 545 ammunition, but it is really hard to obtain. But don't go below that. Don't use BTGS. With just 30% chance to penetrate level 4 armor, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. You can just about get away with it, but I'm of the opinion that I would rather you run a different gun than run an AK with inferior ammo. So hopefully that's explained the ammo choices. We're now going to look at the gun build. I've got the AK-74 here in front of us. I've chosen the AK-74 because it's like the base AK, but pretty much all of these parts will swap onto any of the other variant AKs. And we'll have a look at that in a moment when we come onto a different AK. So if you happen to have a different variant line around, you can just straight swap these parts over. You don't have to use the exact AK-74 that I am. I've chosen this one as the base AK though. It's available from Prapper level 2 for 34,000 rubles. Anyway, let's look at the build. So we'll start at the back and work our way forwards. We've got the AKGP25 accessory kit recoil pad. Pistol grip, we're changing to the AK Magpul MOE pistol grip. I'm also adding on the AKCSS curled charging handle. I removed the rear sights and we've gone for the AK Zenit B33 dust cover. On top of that, I've gone the Elcan Spectre 1X 4X scope. On the handguard, I've changed that over to the B10M plus B19 upper mount. And the foregrip, we're going with the Magpul RVG foregrip. I've added on the Steiner d -bow tactical device there. And up front for the muzzle device, we've got the AK-74 JMAC Customs RRD-4C multi-caliber muzzle brake. 
So the total build, 53 recoil, 64 and a half ergonomics. So the cost of the attachments is 116k. Total build cost, 150,000 rubles. And I think that's a good price for a level 3 build. I don't want to be going too far above that price. So we're going to try and keep the values at that kind of level. This is obviously not a silenced build. I think the majority of these builds I've chosen unsilenced because I want to keep the cost down a little bit so that you can spend that extra cash that you're saving on the ammo because the ammo is going to cost you at this level. And when we have a look at some of the other builds, you might come back to this AK-74 and think, actually, yeah, this is a good gun at that price. We're going to move on to 556 by 45 the ammo I recommend you using here is M995. If you can't get M995, you can use M855A1, then M856A1. But I don't really recommend you go out there with mags full of M856A1. That's your reserve ammo if you run out of the others in raid. You should be going into raid with either M995 and at worst case M855A1. But you can't get M855A1 at level 3. So you're going to have to rely on finding that stuff. M995 you can get from a craft. It's going to be 1,293 per round. But you do get 200 rounds of it per craft. So you do get a fair amount of this. In terms of penetration chance, M995 has got a 96% chance to penetrate level 4 armor. That drops to 70% to penetrate level 5 armor. But it's a big drop off against level 6 armor. Just 4% chance to penetrate at 100 meters. With M995 though, you are still going to need to hit the enemy 3 times in the chest to get a kill. You should be expecting to do it with this round. It's going to be rare that you do come up against people wearing level 6 armor. So now we've discussed the ammo, let's look at some builds. So we've moved over to the 556 by 45 caliber, but we're sticking with the AK. This is the AK-101. It's available from Mechanic Level 2. Slightly more expensive than the AK-74. 43,000 rubles, but the attachments, they just swap straight over. So the build is exactly the same. The only difference is I've changed the Elkan for the black version to tie in with the black stock. And I've left the magazine as a stock 6L29 mag here. They're not always interchangeable, so be aware of that. You are going to have to buy different mags. So this build is 51 vertical recoil, 70 ergonomics. It is actually slightly better than the AK-74. That's really down to the AK-101 stock being better than the stock AK-74. Total attachment cost, very similar, 120,000 rubles. All in, this build will cost you 163,000 rubles. So if you want to make things really simple for yourself, you want to use the 556 caliber and the 545 caliber, you don't really care about learning loads of different weapon builds, just learn this build and then swap between all the different AKs. Really simple way of doing business in Tarkov. This is my level 3 ADAR build. I'm trying to keep the cost down a little bit, but we come out with a build similar to the AK-74. So rather than buying the base weapon straight off, I want you to just buy the lower receiver from Skia. You can buy that at level 1 for 7,245 rubles. And that's what's going to start the build off. Now, because we're buying that low receiver, we're not restricted to the standard ADAR parts. We're changing pretty much everything on the entire build, apart from the barrel, which is the original AR-15 Moller Arms 406mm barrel that you get on the ADAR. We are going to have to repurchase that, though. So with the barrel, I've chosen the standard M4A1 upper receiver. Then I've attached the AR-15 Magpul MOE pistol grip, the Colt A2 buffer tube, and then the Magpul PRS Gen 3 stock. We're going for an all black build here. We've got the AR-15 MASP ambidextrous charging handle. Now, I would have gone with the original ADAR charging handle because the bonus for this one is only one ergo, but you can't actually buy the original ADAR charging handle. So that's why we're using the Mass Industries ambidextrous one. On the handguard, we've gone for the AR-15 Magpul MOE SL medium length M-Lock handguard in black. And then on the foregrip, we've attached the Magpul M-Lock AFG tactical foregrip. That means we don't have to use a rail for that foregrip. But we do attach a rail onto the side so we can put on the Steiner d tactical laser device. The gas block, we've chosen the Daniel Defense Mark 12 low profile gas block. And then the muzzle device on the front, I've gone for the AR-15 Nordic Components Horvet Compensator. I think that's all the parts covered. 
The only other ones, the Elkan Spectre in black on the top and the Stanag 30 round mag in there. So that's the build complete. We get 64 vertical recoil. We get 61 ergonomics. So the cost of the attachments, 152k. All in the build costs, 160k. So now let's look at 762 by 39 mil. I'm going to be recommending BPGZH. Now at proper level 3, this is quest locked behind the Punisher series of quests. So you are going to get that done to purchase it from Prapper. However, there is a good craft at workbench level 3. So when you get that workbench, you want to be crafting this ammunition for sure. And my opinion on 7.62, once you're hitting level 30... You've got level 3 traders, you shouldn't really be touching PSGZH. That should definitely be a reserve ammunition in case you run out of BP in raid. Do not enter the raid if you don't have BP in your gun at the start of the raid. Otherwise, you are going to be at a big disadvantage against somebody even wearing a level 4 armor. So penetration chance, BPGZH has 94% chance to pen level 4 armor, almost guaranteeing 2-shot kill against that armor. But PSGTH, you've got just a 7% chance of panning level 4 armor. You see the huge gulf between these two ammos. So that's why I say do not even enter the raid unless you've got BPGZH in your gun. I think there's one real choice here that stands out at level 3 traders, and that's the AKM. There are a couple of other variants, and if you want a full rundown of the best builds for the AKM from level 1 to level 4, then check out the linked video. We're changing the level 3 build slightly from the one in the previous AKM video. And that's to tie in with the same parts that we've used previously. So this build is almost exactly the same as those prior AK builds. The only difference is in order to get that JMAC Customs RRD-4C multi-caliber muzzle brake onto the AKM, you have to add on the Tactica Chula muzzle adapter. And then that allows you to fit the 545 caliber muzzle devices onto the 7.62 caliber AKM. The rest of the parts are the same. The magazine I've left standard. And that brings us to a vertical recoil of 71, ergonomics of 58. The weapon itself, you can buy from Prapper, 43,000 rubles. The attachments, 121,000 rubles. In total, the cost is 164,000 rubles. So it's roughly equivalent to the AK-101 build from earlier. A little bit more expensive than the base AK-74 build. But if you're running BPGZH through this, I think you're going to enjoy it. If you want to go cheaper, look out for the AKMS across the previous seven days. The AKMS goes for just under 16,000 rubles. So if you just port the AKM build straight across to the AKMS, the recoil's a little worse. It goes from 71 vertical recoil to 77 vertical recoil. You do gain on ergonomics, but the total build cost comes down by around 30,000 rubles. The build cost is now 137,000 rubles, assuming you pick up an AKMS for 16k off the flea. So if you're really looking after your pennies, but you still want to fire 7.62 by 39 BPGZH, then this build is probably the one for you. So finally, we're going to look at 7.62 by 51 mil. So the round I'm going to recommend you use the most is M61. Again, it's obtainable via the workbench, but it is very costly. Almost 3,000 rubles per round, and you only get 80 rounds of it. But the point of this caliber of ammunition is you're not going to be firing off 30 round mags at full auto. You're going to be using this as a, in a semi-auto gun. You should be trying to use this at range. Hit your enemy with two shots and drop them with two shots. This ammo is like Iglianic on steroids. It's got over 90% chance to penetrate an enemy at 100 meters wearing level 6 armor. 96% chance level 5 armor. 97% chance level 4 armor. So you're pretty much guaranteed to penetrate armor with this round. What that means is you just have to focus on hitting them in the chest. As your reserve ammunition, you're going to be looking at M62. That is quest locked. And then if you're struggling, M80. Now, M80 only has a 5% chance to penetrate level 5 armor, so it is going to struggle against level 5 armor, but it does have a 73% chance to pen level 4 armor. Let's have a look at two builds using this caliber. 
First up, we're going to look at the Knights Armament Company SR25. You can purchase this from Peacekeeper, but that's going to set you back 125,000 rubles. So as far as I'm concerned, when you're buying the weapon, you need to buy it off the flea market only. Over the last seven days, the average selling price has been 72,000 rubles. I would look to get it at that price or lower because this is going to be the most expensive build you're going to see in total. Also, when you're buying off the flea market, make sure you are getting most of the attachments. The muzzle device, we are going to change, but the rest of the build is the same as the stock version. So if somebody puts it up on the flea market and it's not got the stock, then don't buy it because it's going to cost you money to replace it. So in terms of the build itself, we're only changing two main things, the muzzle device and then we're adding the scope. So we'll run through the muzzle device first. We've changed the stock flash suppressor kit to the KAC QDC muzzle brake kit. And then we've added the KAC PRS slash QDC sound suppressor onto the front. I've added on the Night Force 30mm ring scope mount, and then I've added in the Burris Full Field TAC 30 1x4X rifle scope. I prefer this scope to the LCAN for longer range weapons. And personally, that's how I'd consider this. It's an expensive build. It will work in close range. There's nothing wrong with it. But I personally want to be using this weapon at a bit longer range. So that's why I'm going for the Burris over the Alcan. And that's it. That's the build. This doesn't include a tactical device. You could add a foregrip on there, but it's all adding to the expense. So I wanted to try and keep the cost of the overall build as low as possible. We're still giving a good build. And I think just with the attachments that I've done, we've managed to do that to get that balance. So the vertical recoil, we've got 94 ergonomics, a bit low, 27 ergonomics. And in total, the cost of the rifle, I put down at 72,000 rubles. Remember, you're going to have to get that off the flea market. The cost of the attachment, 116,000 rubles. That sound suppressor is expensive. So all in, we're talking 188,000 rubles for this build. You could go much more expensive. You can change the stock. You can put on a foregrip. You can put on a tactical device. But that all adds cash. So I wanted to keep it as low as possible with this build. You could use this as a base and build on it further if you want to do that. So this is the Caltech RFB. This is going to be the cheapest build overall that you're going to see on this video. It is cheap. It fires a great quality caliber of ammunition. I've added a few extra attachments, but not much. We've gone for the Magpul RVG foregrip on the bottom. I've added in the RFB thread spacer, and then we've used the AR-10 Nordic Components Corvette muzzle brake. And then I've stuck with the Night Force Mag Mount 30mm ring scope, along with the Burris Full Field TAC-30 rifle scope. I chose that scope to tie in with the SR-25 build, so that those the cost of those parts were the same. And then you can compare to that SR25. Now you could silence this RFB. The best combination is using the same one that we use for the SR25. Well, that bumps the price up dramatically. So rather than silencing the RFB, I think it's better to go with that SR25 build. If you must have a silencer, use the SR25. If you don't really care about a silencer and you care about saving your cash, then I think this Caltech RFB build is the one for you. So 138 recoil. 52 ergonomics, 55,000 rubles from Skia for the cost of the RFB. Attachment costs 62,000 rubles. Total build costs 117,000 rubles. So you're saving 70k to the cost of that SR25 build that I just showed you. So comparing all the rifles across all of the calibers, I think if you're budget conscious, you want to save some cash, then the RFB and the AKMS are probably the rifles for you. If you're more of a slower paced player, you like long range maps, then the SR25 and the ADAR could suit you particularly well. And if you love to spray down the enemy, then, you know, the AK-74 and the AK-101 can definitely do that job as well. So I think all of these rifles are fantastic guns at level three, fulfill all the different kinds of roles that you need them to fulfill. In terms of ammo, if I had to choose one caliber in particular to say, this ammo is the best or most obtainable 
Personally, my opinion would be the 545 AK ammunition. PPBS craft at the workbench is, I think, a good craft. But also the reserve ammunition with the BSGS is a really good barter at level 3 traders. Smash the hell out of that barter. Buy as much as you can every trader reset. So if you want to get the best ammunition in the most quantities, I would probably say that the 545 ammo is the one to go with. Hopefully that's ticked all the boxes that you need it to tick at this level. Let me know down below in the comments. Let me know what your favorite is. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching, and I'm sure I'll catch you in another video.